Welcome to the Quick Start Tutorial to Filibuster, a semi-co-opted political themed card game from By Playing Games. This game is designed by Dan Kramer and illustrated by Juliana Ouyang and Fernando Olmedo. Filibuster plays 3 to 5 players ages 10 and up in about 30 to 45 minutes. You and the other players are senators of the minority party. Your goal is to be the one to collect the most influence by not passing policies put up by the majority party. At the end, you still want to be on top, but you need the help from your fellow party members. If four policies have been passed, then all of you lose. If you manage to stick around after seven rounds, then it will be time to determine who wins filibuster. Setting up a game of filibuster is simple. First, shuffle the policy deck and deal out seven policy cards, four policies in the first row and three policies in the second row. Now shuffle the action deck and deal four cards to each player. Each player will also receive two influential tokens, their voting token and reference card of a color, and an A and I token. Place the board in the middle of the table and the other game tokens nearby. Take the eagle token and place it on the 6 of the filibuster difficulty track. Next, shuffle the time deck. Now flip the first policy proposal in the first slot face up. Finally, the last person to visit Washington DC becomes the Senate Minority Leader. Of course, players may decide to pick a player randomly to become the Senate Minority Leader. The other players are known as Supporting Senators. The game is divided into two main phases. Voting, known as elections which occur right when the next policy card is revealed except in the first round. And filibuster, where the players try to stop the policy from passing. Let's go over the filibuster phase. The goal of each round is to help the Senate Minority Leader to filibuster long enough so that when it ends, it meets or succeeds the difficulty level. All players are not only doing their best to make this their goal but also to earn as much influence as possible, especially the Senate Minority Leader even if the policy does pass. The phase begins with the Senate Minority Leader taking their turn. They first draw a card from the top of the time deck and follow its instructions on the text. Some cards will end the round completely and might take on a nasty surprise. Then they have the option to play a red bordered action card from their hand. The length of the filibuster is increased by the number located on top of the card. Progress is kept on the filibuster track and represents an hour of time. After the Senate Minority Leader has taken their first turn, the player to the left takes their turn and the turn returns back to the Senate Minority Leader in a rondo style. So say in this example, the round begins with the Senate Minority Leader Agatha, then to Billy, then back to Agatha, then to Chrissy, back to Agatha, then to Dylan, and so on. When a supporting senator takes their turn, they draw a card from the action deck and then choose one of the following actions. They can draw an additional card and add it to their hand. There is no limit of cards a player can hold. They can play a blue bordered action card with the assist keyword. They follow the direction of the text on the card and also receive the influence for playing that card. And last, they can pass a red bordered action card to the Senate Minority Leader and hope they can use it, but it's up to them to play it or not. The giving player is rewarded with the influence equal to the value shown on the clock. The filibuster phase will end in one of three ways. A card from the time deck is drawn that makes it end. The time deck is empty when the Senate Minority Leader needs to draw. Or the player reaches the maximum 24 hour filibuster which automatically succeeds the round. The optional way is to have a vote to end it. At the beginning of their turn, the Senate Minority Leader may call up for a vote to end the filibuster voluntarily. When this is done, a 60 second timer goes off and the players by the end will secretly choose an I or an A on their voting token. Also during this time, players are allowed to negotiate with their influence tokens and cards. At the end of 60 seconds, the votes are revealed. If the eyes have it, the filibuster ends but the players forfeit the rewards and the Senate Minority Leader earns half the value of the influence earned, rounded up. 
If the nays have it, the players who voted nay gains an influence equal to the policy round, and play continues as normal. Only a maximum of one of these votes can be called per policy. If the players are successful with their filibuster, then they earn their rewards on the bottom of the card. The card of that round is turned to show that it was successful. This in consequence will increase the difficulty track up by one. If the players are not successful, they get the setback described on the card. Either way, the Senate Minority Leader earns influence equal to the length of the filibuster. For each new round following the first, a vote called the snap election takes place to select a new Senate Minority Leader. First, the new policy card is revealed so players can know the rewards and setbacks. All players draw up to 4 cards and now they have 60 seconds to vote on a new leader. At this time, players freely vote to select a player that will become the new Senate Minority Leader and of course, negotiate if they wish. For a 3 player game, there needs to be a unanimous decision. In a 4 player game, at least 3 and a 5 player game, at least 4 votes for a new leader. After 60 seconds, or if the players agree to do so to vote early, the voting ends. If the player succeeds in selecting a new Senate Minority Leader, they move on to the filibuster round beginning with the new Senate Minority Leader taking their first turn. If the players fail to select a new leader, the position of the Senate Minority Leader remains and all other players discard down to one card. The leader will also pay influence equal to the number listed on the policy as a penalty. The players then move on to the filibuster phase. For each new round, the Senate Minority Leader shuffles all the cards to create a new time deck. Just remember, the game ends and all players lose if four policies have been unsuccessfully thwarted. At the end of the seventh round, the players count up their influence to see who wins the game. This concludes the quick start tutorial to Filibuster. For more information about this game, please visit byplaynggames.com. Thanks for watching. For more videos like these, come visit the Cardboard Stacker channel on YouTube and subscribe. This is Ferdinand the Cardboard Stacker reminding you to keep on stacking games.